Welcome, friends. We are delighted to see you. And uh, this can be a great lesson. Uh, it can be uh, one of the greatest lessons that we have ever studied. And we trust that God will make this lesson to be uh, very purposeful in your lives and that you will feel uh, the strength of God as you have never felt it before. Uh, we are in an army. Uh, nobody with their right sense ever told you that being a Christian uh, was on, on the flowery beds of ease. Uh, the Apostle Paul was getting along good until he became a Christian. <laughs> he was riding high, wide, and handsome. Uh, but once he became a Christian, it was another world. He was in a battle. Of course, he won the battle. He was glad he had fought, and he won a great victory. He says there was in heaven uh, for him a reward for the victory he had won. And, and this lesson, which is lesson 22, we are dealing with part two of seven steps toward uh, demon power. You, you really need uh, this, this uh, uh, teaching book uh, for this because it would not be possible to cover all of this material adequately. Uh, we were talking to you about repressive repression in our last lesson, how you can be repressed. And, and sometimes there is repression in religion. Uh, there are churches to where you go in dull, you come out dull. You go in unhappy, you come out unhappy. Nobody has smiled, nobody has praised God, nobody's rejoiced, nobody's been glad, nobody's said hallelujah, nobody's said praise the Lord. Oh no, that's not part of it. It's dead religion, it's mournful religion, it's cemetery religion, and, and they don't want anything else. And it becomes a repression. It represses the natural instincts of the person. And, and church should not be the, the, the place on earth that you go to get repressed. Uh, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And he went rejoicing and praising into the house of the Lord. Modern religion in, in some areas ha has lost the touch of joy that God wants it to have. Religion can become uh, repressive. Sometimes it's in our homes. Uh, 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 an overbearing father can make the whole family to be repressed. An overbearing mother, a nagging mother, can have the whole family repressed. And, and sometimes it's from some of the children. A daughter represses the whole family with her, with her tantrums. And, or a son uh, with his waywardness and his bullishness uh, can repress the whole family. And so it can come up out of the family. It can come from where you work. A man that has a, a little straw boss job can be so uh, repressive against his men that, two or three men that work under him until he makes living uh, like being in hell uh, to live with them. So it can come from, from a number of areas. The thing is, God does not want you to live that way. The devil might, but God does not. And he wants to, you to find a means and ways of escape. And you can, it, you can match up to anybody. If it's in the home or it's at work, just say, now, just a moment, everybody. It's time here to praise the Lord. It's time here to talk to Jesus. It, it's time here to get things straight. I'm not going to bear the burdens of repression, and I don't want anybody else to bear them. You see, <laughs> you, you're right out of it. You've taken the bull by the horns, you see, and you've been a, a, a victor. Rather than a captive, you've become a victor in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every Christian should be careful not to repress others. If God's given you a position uh, or you're the head of a family, it's not your business to repress those. Some little children, if they open their mouth, they get a knock side the head. And no wonder they develop wrong for the simple reason they have been repressed in their homes. Every human should express himself joyfully and live joyfully before the Lord. Let us go to our third stage, our third step of the devil taking over life, and that is suppression. The dictionary defines it as, as, as suppress, meaning abnormal, to abnormally squeeze down. It also means to conceal or to or suppress information of feelings and desires which are not expressed or, 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 and are suppressed uh, can hold you back and keep you back. The devil is very keen on, sus on suppression. He, he, he represents another step toward the, the, the deterioration of the emotions and the destruction of the full and complete personal happiness that God has called you to have. Suppression is an artificial thing and it comes from without. It is an unholy action uh, because God and the entire Bible uh, reveal dynamic expression that comes from God, the openness of desire and the exuberance of feeling. Uh, let us realize that the devil causes uh, regression of the spiritual life, and that it is, it is, a, it is a, 
uh, a, a reversion to the earlier behavior patterns, especially with the emotions and with the, and with the expressions. When Satan moves to uh, repress you, which is a, a, a step downward, it has to do with restraining and, and holding back. And so with suppression, we have the concealment of the greater pressures moving against a victorious uh, life, a joyful life. Note that the devil will not stop at the third step or any other place. He never quits until as long as you live on the face of this earth. But you can stop him. You can refuse to be regressed, repressed, or suppressed, saying, I will not accept it. And when you do, that's the moment of victory. That's the moment of glory in your life. The fourth step down is what we call a depression. And this fourth downward step, uh, uh, depression is a terrible thing. It is a big step in the path toward uh, satanic control over a human and immortal soul. It, it is a terrible thing. In depression, there is a broken spirit, a broken spirit. One is pressed down until his spirit is crushed. To, to remain depressed for a long period of time simply is satanic. It is not divine and it is not human. It is not natural to, to, to human life. God doesn't want anyone depressed and sad. God is not in that business. Any person who stays depressed for an extended time is a sick person. Now, you believe me. <laughs> you, you stay depressed for any length of time, and the devil has taken over and taken advantage of your life and your state of mind, and he moves in with a conflict and a confusion that will destroy your home and your heart, your business, or anything else. He will destroy your happiness. Your homes and your business must have joy in them. Are you, uh, are you not living? You're only existing. Depression will destroy any part and every part of our natural spiritual lives that God wants us to enjoy on this earth. It is a sad thing when we observe the masses of people in our country today and around the world who are simply depressed. Personally, I refuse to be depressed by the devil or by anybody else. God does not want any human person depressed. The devil is the depressor of human life, and we simply will not accept it. By experience, I have discovered that a downcast face and a sad soul and a sad countenance simply will not resolve problems. They won't pay the bills, and they do not do you good. They just simply do not. King David said in Psalm 103, verse 3, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Now, that's the way you should go. You should get up in the morning, and that's the way you should go to bed at night. Start the day blessing the Lord. Bless the Lord, David, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And that will remove any, any depression from your life. You say, what, what causes depression? Well, you can be religiously depressed. Over in the country of the Philippines in Tai Tai, I was speaking in the Methodist church there, and, and there was a woman whose husband had died about eight or nine months before, and, uh, and she was living in a state of total depression, of total depression. They were very successful business people. They had plenty of this world's goods, and she just couldn't see why her husband would die. And she relived it every day. She relived death every day. When I spoke in that church, I, I told her very simply that she would die, that she would die, and that she would cause that church to die, and that that thing had to be rebuked and repulsed. And in other places, we have told you that story uh, very strongly, and it must be told again and again, because when we prayed for her and set her free from that depression, it lifted a, uh, it lifted a darkness and a cloud off the whole church, and that church became a source of joy and a source of blessing in that community that it had never been before, when that depression was lifted off of it, and it was a religious one. But for 12 months, I have to mourn. They would never have stopped mourning. They would never have stopped mourning. It was a mourning group, and this woman made it so. Uh, being a leader in the church and her husband being the main elder of the church uh, before he passed away, uh, it made it that way. Tradition demands a long face and a sad countenance, oftentimes. But the Bible says in Proverbs 17 and 22, a merry heart doth good like a medicine. <laughs> a merry heart doth good like a medicine. If you'll be happy, if you'll be joyful, it does good like a medicine. It's a terrible situation when millions Millions of people are deeply depressed. If God does not send one of his servants to set them free, they can slip deeper 
into the domination of the devil by demon, uh, de uh, by demon domination. Many times, depression is triggered by loss, by deep trouble, by heavy financial problems, by, by family uh, situations. Disappointments can depress a person, leaving them dejected and forlorn. A depression is a dangerous thing because it often uh, brings about an abnormal state of inactivity. Uh, the person may sit staring into space, hearing nothing, saying nothing, uh, doing nothing, and, and, and feels uh, a depressant on the inside of them. A sadness uh, so deep that there is no expression for it, so painful that there are no tears. Uh, the problem seems so desperate and complex that they cannot be solved. Uh, he has reached a point where he sees no need to even try any longer. That person is in a siege of depression. Now remember, God did not put it there. Uh, 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 humans might, but God will take it off, and you don't have to suffer that kind of depression. Almost everybody has feelings of depression occasionally. Anybody, occasionally, and usually the average person overcomes it either in a few minutes or a few hours or at the most a day or two. Sometimes a word of comfort or encouragement from a friend causes it to pass away. Reading the Word of God can cause it to leave. A good night's rest I can take it away while you're sleeping. The angels just wash it clear out of the inside of you. Our, our change of scenery is, is enough to bring a new hope and a renewed strength and new living. Again, if depression and melancholy hang on, the victim may be headed for very serious problems in their lives in a devil taking a complete takeover of their lives. The devil would like every Christian in the world to be depressed. That's everybody. Uh, he knows that depressed people are not energetic. They're not enthusiastic. They're not builders. He says, I'd like to take them over. A depressed person uh, becomes listless, inactive, disinterested in what's going on around him. If another Christian, uh, if enough Christians can get depressed, you can stop the move of God and you can cause the whole world to enter into a strange bondage. And you better believe it. He would have no one to oppose him and to thwart his evil plans if he could just get people to become depressed. Your fifth stage uh, is what we call oppression. It's, a, it's, a, it's the fifth stage is, is a, when the devil drags a person uh, down to destroy and to possess him uh, with this oppression. It's a vast area of human experience far deeper and more involved than depression is. To oppress uh, anybody is to weight him down with something he's not able to carry. Uh, that's what the word oppression means. The children of Israel were oppressed in Egypt. You know, they were just carrying too much freight. They were not able to bear it. They were cruelly treated. They were beaten unmercifully. They were crushed down. And they couldn't carry their burdens any longer. If you are oppressed, you're burdened uh, with a load that is more than you're possibly able to carry. You say, how in the world can one be oppressed? Well, they can be oppressed through disease. The Bible says in Acts 10 and 38 that God the Father sent the Lord Jesus Christ to this earth to heal all those who were oppressed oppressed of the devil. So he came to heal those that were oppressed of the devil. Christ came especially to heal oppressed people. This suggests that oppression can be in the realm of disease. In America today and in other lands and countries throughout the world, there are millions of people who are oppressed. I do not believe disease is a natural thing any more than a beautiful tree would be natural to have every kind of bug and every kind of disease covering its branches and say, oh, isn't it pretty? That would not be true. Uh, and a human is exactly the same way. I believe it is to be uh, natural, is to be healthy, that God made us that way. And that unnatural is to be unhealthy. And God does not want us to be that way. I believe disease comes because the dirty old devil is trying to make people sick uh, throughout the world. If every man in the world was a doctor, and if every woman in the world was a nurse, and if every house in the world was a hospital, there'd still be millions of sick people because sickness is a spiritual thing. It is an oppression. It is an oppression. Shake the thing off, rebuke it, and cause it to go and say, I will not be oppressed by the devil. Oppressions can come through fear. One of the greatest causes of depression is fear. Millions of people are oppressed by fear. Uh, they, they worry 
all the time about going out of their minds, which they're not. And that's what the devil wants them to do, is just to, uh, to worry. But remember, he is a liar, and the Bible says in John 8, 44, he is a father of lies. The devil wants you to be tormented. He wants you to be hurt. Uh, he wants to mock. He wants to laugh at God's people. And uh, God's people have no right uh, to suffer any such fears. Uh, one, of the great, one of the great blessings of Christianity is a strong mind which is able to reject the unreasonable demands of fear. Fear is a torment, and God does not want you to have it. We have a whole book on this subject. I certainly wish that you would uh, get it and, and read it and understand it. Ways and means of oppression. Uh, Satan has many uh, means of oppressing, uh, of oppressing people. He may crush your spirit by having people that you thought were your friends attack you viciously. Now, that, that'll oppress a person in a hurry, in a hurry, you know. He may seek to trample you down uh, through disaster, through woes. He, he, may, he may try to overpower you through a great display of demonic power, which hurts you, and, and you feel helpless against this cruel onslaught. Uh, he might weigh you down with an awesome sense of, of responsibility for, for, for the people and the actions in your family and your community that you're not supposed to carry that burden. Uh, he might burden you with a feeling that all your troubles and your misfortunes are punishments from God because of your sin. And that's a lie. God does not do that. He forgives us of our sins. All these things fall into a category of demonic oppressions. God does not want you to be oppressed. Oppression can be defeated. Ex ex exercise your Christian dominion. Uh, only, only Christians, uh, sinners, you have to get saved in order to be free from it. Uh, you do this through your faith, uh, through your prayers, through your actions that you have. Uh, you should have faith in God's command in your life and God's power that you have to, to exercise in your life. You should pray to strengthen your inner being, and you should act to overcome and destroy the works of the devil. And if you are oppressed of the devil, either by disease or by fear or by your nerves being upset or with anything, I want you to receive the deliverance of God. I want you to receive it now. In Jesus' name. The sixth step that you can take toward the devil overcoming your life is, is what we call obsession. Now, in, in obsession, it, it means uh, uh, when, when the devil moves in to completely obsess you. But I would like to say in this area that there are actually two kinds of uh, obsession. One is what we will call positive obsession. Uh, for example, Christ was obsessed with his own destiny of saving the world. He couldn't get away from that. The Apostle Paul was obsessed with the gospel of Jesus Christ, so much that a Roman governor said, you are a madman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they, these were what we call magnificent obsessions. And Pete, you can be obsessed with good. But in doing that, it is, there are no negative experiences related to it. But there is a negative obsession which destroys the human personality. And at this stage, you cannot save yourself. At that stage of demon domination, I doubt if any individual would be able to come out from under the hurt of Satan in order to save himself without the assistance of a brother or sister uh, helping them in prayer. I feel sure that a person who is repressed can shake it off in Jesus' name and be free, and a person that's depressed uh, could shake it off and, and says, I, I refuse to be under this power, and could rid himself of it and become happy again with a joyful spirit. It is possible for one who is oppressed to help himself and, 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 and to say, listen, I want to be free. But when you get to the stage of obsession, and uh, your mind does not any longer have its control uh, over you, of, over your thinking. Uh, you need outside help in order to be free, and God wants you to be, to be free. Uh, when you are obsessed, that which is crooked is straight, and your best friend is your deadest enemy. You don't understand things as you, as you should. You are obsessed. You've got one little thing in mind, and you keep talking about it, and nobody else wants to talk about it uh, because it is not relative to, to, to fine living. By definition, obsession is an evil thing, deceiving a person and impelling him to unreasonable actions. Uh, the dictionary says it is a persistent and inescapable preoccupation with one idea or emotion. And this idea usually has no relationship to reality uh, whatsoever. They become possessed. You say, how can a person become possessed? It can, uh, 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 obsession can come to you by believing a lie. 
if, if, we, if we believe, if what you think and you believe is out of line with what others believe, it'd be good for you to check your beliefs and to seek to know the truth and, and identify truth and be willing to say, I was wrong. I, I refuse to be wrong anymore. I am going to be right. Otherwise, the devil can deceive such a person, and we call that obsession. Obsession can come in many ways. It can come through jealousy. A, a man or, or, or a woman may become obsessed with the idea uh, that his wife or, or, her, or her husband is not loyal, and this thing preys upon his or her mind, and the devil takes the idea and makes a root of it grow uh, like an evil vine. And finally, every turn and every word uh, that their uh, that their loved one says uh, is, uh, brings back jealousy. And it says, now uh, he has done something wrong. I'm sure he's done something wrong. And their, their lives are destroyed because of the, of the evilness of jealousy when possibly there was no reason for it whatsoever. You see, they have become obsessed with that. Now, also, hatred uh, can be an avenue of obsession. One can believe others dislike him or her and, and begin to hate them until they can't think straight and they can't think right. Uh, it can see uh, what is true. Uh, they can really love them, and they, they can call that hate. They can even just speak a word of instruction. Oh, yes, I know you hate me. I know you hate me, you see. And hatred uh, blinds them to the truth. And this hatred becomes an obsession. Don't be overcome with such hatreds. There are certain sins, uh, such as moral transgressions, uh, that can become an obsession in a life. One may become overwhelmed uh, by, by an immorality, and that, and that this immorality uh, 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 can become a blindness within them and an obsession with them until they cannot live pure, they cannot think pure, simply because they are obsessed uh, with sin. You must protect your willpower. The devil has many avenues by which to invade the human personality. When anyone develops a complex in any form, that person should pray, read the Word of God, consult with a minister to, to see if the devil is trying to obsess his entire being. An obsessed person uh, comes to the place where he has no willpower. He has no strength to resist. He, he becomes a slave uh, to ideas that are not true. His mind gets on one track, and he finds it impossible to remove himself uh, from that track. His willpower is one of the greatest gifts he's ever had. God gave it to him. We should take this, and we should take our willpower and set ourselves free with it. One of the great dangers of hypnotism is that one would, would yield his mind at, uh, and spirit to another person, uh, another individual. And that person might be utterly unscrupulous. Uh, and you have, you have given to them your innermost being, and you can become obsessed with such a thing. You can become obsessed with fortune-telling and, and, and predictions and, and fraudulent seers uh, telling you lies. You can become obsessed by drug addictions, by alcoholic uh, addictions. There are many ways that the devil can destroy your willpower uh, to, so that you wouldn't have any will to serve God. You have become, you have become a slave. You have become a slave uh, to the devil. God wants you to be free. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, and, and verse 23, the Lord Jesus Christ says, All things are possible to them that believe. If you will believe with me right now that you can be free, you shall be free by God's mighty power. We have left one final step in this, uh, and that, uh, that is the step number seven called possession. Now, this step alone should take a long time to study it, really. Demon possession is the final step by which the devil captures an immortal soul and in this area, uh, to seek and to have cautious and conservative in our thinking, uh, we need to understand it very well. The step from obsession to possession is a long step. The devil would like to push every obsessed person fully and finally into his clutches of full possession. For, uh, for up until this stage, a person is not truly demon-possessed. But I do not find many people in this final stage, although there are hundreds in the other stages, I do not find many in this total stage of possession. Uh, the the, the demon-possessed person is under the absolute, total, and complete control and jurisdiction of the devil. He has no mind of his own. The ownership of his soul by the devil is complete. Satan is the master of all that person's thinking and of all their actions. He has full control of that life. That person has no mind to think, no spirit to reach out for God, and no soul to pray for, for help. 
uh, he is a helpless person and needs and, and needs deliverance from this diabolical monster. Now, uh, discerning a demon possession. We do not believe that we should run around saying, you're possessed and you're possessed and you're possessed. Uh, you need someone uh, uh, who has great knowledge in this area uh, before they say a certain person is possessed. When a, when a woman says, come and pray for my husband, he's possessed of the devil, I know they just had a quarrel. And so I take it very, very carefully and, and go and pray for this person.